Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to be putting the wheels and tires together for the Kit Fox. I'm going to install the tail wheel and install the landing gear on the airplane. Stick around for just a couple seconds and we'll get started. I thought I'd show you this part just because I know some of you have not built an airplane before and based on some of the comments I get I think people wonder if they can build an airplane or if it might be too challenging and it's really not and I want to show you how Kit Fox does this this obviously is the page for the tail wheel every part on here has a letter that letter corresponds down here to a number so for example if I want to bolt on this tail spring the first bolt I want to put in is right here it's, there's a letter H and if you come down to the bottom here letter H is an AN522A. This is the box that all the tail wheel parts come in and as you can see I've unpacked some of it and the reason why I've laid it out like this is I wanted to show you how nicely Kit Fox labels their parts. So each part laid out here has a label on it with the name of the part and also the part number so if I wanted to find that AN522A bolt, I can see right here that this looks like about the right size bolt. And if I look on the label, it clearly says AN522A. There's my bolt. I know that might sound overly simple to explain that to you, but again, that's mostly for the people that just might have a little fear about building their own airplane or wondering if they can do it. And I just wanted to show you really how easy it is when you take it step by step and how nicely Kit Fox actually labels their parts so they're easy to find. So this is the bolt that I just put in with a nut and a washer. And as you can see, there's two bushings here, a little plate and two more bolts with some nuts and washers that'll secure the back of this tail spring. So letter B, you can see right here, are the bushings. Letter B down here is bushing 5 16 by 0.188. And if you happen to move up here, look what we have here labeled nicely in this bag. There's my two bushings. So I'll grab the bushings. I'll grab all the, the bolts and nuts and the plate. And I'll take it over and bolt it on the airplane. Well, I ran into a little snafu. I was gathering the parts together to bolt on the tail spring. I've already put this bolt in. And I have the bolts, the bushings, the nuts, and the washers. And I need this plate right here. And it's not in the box with the tail wheel parts, which is where I would think it would be. So right now, I can't find it. And if you remember, I bought this kit partially started from my buddy Mike. And since I can't find this part, that means probably one of two things happened. Number one is he may have taken this part and put it somewhere else so it might be packaged in a different box or it may have never arrived with a kit. Maybe Kit Fox Aircraft forgot to put it in with a kit when they shipped it out. But there's a way I can tell. When you buy a kit plane, it will come with pages and pages of inventory sheets. And it's always a good idea to go through and check your actual parts against the inventory sheet. And I'll tell you, my buddy Mike did a really good job of this. Uh, you can see here, it gives you the name of the part, the part number, how many are included, and it gives you an empty box here where you can put a check mark once you verify that you have received the part. And on the Kit Fox manual here, it actually tells you what box it's in. So if I go a couple pages back here, I can find that plate right here. Here's a description. Here's the part number. It says there's one of them included. And Mike did check it off, so he did verify that it was included with the kit. And it says it's in box number PC. And honestly, right now, I'm not sure what PC means. I might have to go back and look a little through the manual to see what, what box that is. But the thing is, at least I know it's here. I know that it, it's included with the kit. It's checked off as, as received. So I just have to kind of go and find it and I can continue on. 
Well, I looked everywhere for that plate and could not find it. So I ended up buying a new one from Kit Fox. So it delayed me for a few days, but I now have it. And this is the new plate that I'm installing right now. There's a big hole in this tail piece here where this bolt goes through and that has to be opened up on a drill press. So I didn't film it, but in that big black solid chunk of aluminum there, I did have to open up that hole to the proper size for the bolt. There's nothing tricky here, just tighten up the bolt and the tail wheel is done. Moving on to the main gear now, there are four roll pins you have to put in the gear. And the manual says you can use an arbor press or a hammer, and I don't have a press. So I used a hammer and I had no difficulty with these pins, they went right in. I bolted the axles on next, and I thought I got a picture of this, but I guess I didn't. The bolts that they give you in the, uh, the kit, or the ones they call for in the manual, are actually too short. So I'm using them for now, but I will have to replace them with longer bolts eventually when I install this permanently. This last bolt here, I had to persuade a little bit to go through the hole. Moving on to the wheels now, I had to take them apart. There's three bolts to hold the halves together. There's a caution that comes with your wheels that tells you that the bearings are packed with just a, uh, a temporary type of grease. So. I have to take the wheel halves apart anyway to put the, the, the tube and tire on and I thought while I had them apart I would properly grease these bearings now so I don't have to do it later. In order to remove these wheel bearings there's a clip that holds some washers together Here's a picture of that clip. Take the clip off, remove the metal washer, under that's a felt washer, and then there's another metal washer under that, and under this washer is the bearing. Now since that caution message says that this is just a preservative grease, I wiped it all off. I got as much out of it uh, from the wheel and also from the bearing as I could. I figured I'd take out all the preservative grease, wipe it clean, and then replace it all with the proper wheel bearing grease. I have this bearing greaser thing from when I had my Cherokee and I just did my other wheels and this thing sure makes a mess so I'm not even sure I'm using this thing correctly. Uh, I had an A&P mechanic which is a, who's a buddy of mine showed me how to use this thing a couple years ago when we greased the bearings on my Cherokee and um, I don't remember it making that much of a mess so if I'm doing this wrong leave a comment below and let me know because I have a feeling I'm not doing this right but anyway that that bearing just gets sandwiched in there like that and then I've got this thing here with grease in it and I, I really don't remember what kind of grease this is. It's whatever grease he used to do my bearings on a Cherokee. So you just pump it through a few times like that. And you'll start to see the grease come through the bearing. There it is. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in there, but the grease has started to come through the bearing. So this just pumps it through and make sure it's, it's lubed. But then the problem I have is after you take this part off again, it's just there's just grease everywhere. So it's kind of messy, but maybe that's just how it's supposed to be. I actually don't know. It definitely works though. I mean look at that. The whole thing is full of grease. But it definitely uh, definitely greases the wheel bearing. So there's a lot of a lot of grease on there. I guess I'll just spread it around like that, but 
Well, once I put the greasy bearing back in there, it's just basically reassembling all the pieces here. And the last part is this retaining clip. There it is. All right, so this half is all done. I'll do the other half and put the inner tube and tire in it. All right, so putting these tires together, I'm looking in the directions and it says to put some talcum powder or baby powder in the wheel and that lets the inner tube slide around a little bit. You can see there is a red dot right there and that's where the valve stem lines up with. So once you put the inner tube in, you might have to turn it just a little bit to, to line that up. So I put a little block of wood in here just to help spread the tire apart so that I can get the baby powder and put that in there. This is the inner tube as it comes from Kitfox. I used a bicycle pump just to put a little bit of air in the inner tube to open it up just a bit. And then it's just a matter of trying to stuff it in the tire. And then don't forget, once you get it in there, you may have to rotate the inner tube just a little bit to line that valve stem up with the red dot that's on the outside of the tire. All right, now comes the fun part. And that's putting the wheels back together. I'm showing you this page of the Kit Fox manual you can read under the caution where it talks about when you assemble these two wheel halves, it's kind of obvious, but you want to make sure that the inner tube is not pinched between the two halves of the wheels. And on mine, it was pretty easy. If you put a little bit of air in the inner tube, once you get it in the tire, the, you'll hear the two wheel halves clunk together and the inner tube doesn't even come close to coming in between them. But you do want to just be careful that you don't pinch that inner tube. All I'm doing here is just tightening the nuts onto the bolts and the manual states that these nuts get torqued to 150 inch pounds so I have the torque wrench set to 150 and I just went through and torqued each of the three nuts. Once I had both wheels done this was kind of the fun part just putting them on the axles they slide right on there's a spacer that goes on there and then a big nut there's a big cotter pin that goes through the nut but obviously I'm not going to put that on yet because these wheels will come off again to fit the wheel pant brackets later on in the assembly process. Now the even more fun part is putting the landing gear on the airplane. I suckered a couple of the air park folks to come over and give me a hand here. My buddy Len is lifting up the fuselage while Brian and I are inserting the bolts from the gear up into the frame and we just kind of lowered the frame onto the gear. A little bit of wiggle on, a little bit of persuasion of the bolts they went through and got the, uh, the nuts on them. Well, the Kit Fox is now on the gear, and we had a little bit of a problem. Before I had help, I had the gear with these blocks and the bolts in it leaning up against the sawhorse that the fuselage was sitting on. And the, the wheels rolled and the, the, the gear slid down the, the uh, sawhorse, and it landed on this bolt, and it bent it just slightly, just enough to where I couldn't get it in the hole. So I have to replace this bolt uh, so right now there's three out of four bolts that are in here, which is fine because it, it holds it just fine. And you know, this gear has to come back off again to cover the fuselage and either buff this and polish it or paint it or whatever I'm going to do. So not a big deal, but got to order a new bolt. 
Now the final step is just putting air in the tires and I didn't worry about putting the actual proper pressure. I just filled them up a little bit for now and I'll fill them properly later. Well now that the gear is on and everything's done, I just wanted to spin the fuselage around 180 degrees so that the front of the airplane is a little bit easier to access since the next step on the kit fox here is to put in the adjustable rudder pedal kit and flight controls and all the stuff on the front end. So I just flipped it around here and then I brought the wings back, did a little bit of rearranging and it's all set up now. Hey guys, just want to say thanks again for watching the video. Sometimes it's nice just to see somebody else do a task before you do it, so hopefully you picked up a tip or two from the video, or just saw that it's not a hard job to put the gear on a plane. I'm kind of excited now that the gear is on, I can move the fuselage around, I can put the rudder pedals in and start finishing up some work on here. Please subscribe to the channel, I've got lots more good videos coming on the Kit Fox and the Zenith Cruiser. So we'll see you on the next video.